My life before was like a train wreck, is the best way I can describe it. I was not the person that God meant me to be, and, uh, and you know, I had nothing. I, I pretty much had every single job you could think of, and in every job that I've had, I've been discriminated against. It's hard to believe that my life was saved by solar. Not too long after my parents divorced, uh, my mom was, became a single mother, which caused tension between the two of us. I ran away a lot, so that eventually led me to a group home. And I eventually ran away from there too. And that led me to the Department of Corrections, which is where I got my first adult record. I was about to be a felon. I had charges pending that were really gonna limit my employment opportunities. And I didn't know how to change it and didn't feel like I had the support that I needed to really get through that stage in my life. So I signed up for Jobs Partnership at that local church. I went through the program, successfully completed, and got my certificate. Well, look who's here. Good to see you. Yeah, <laughs> great to see you. And here's that pretty, pretty little one. How old are you, sweetie pie? Can you say two? Jobs Partnership uh, helps people by training them to get jobs, to get second, third, fourth, fifth chances in life, because rarely do people move up in a straight line. In Illinois, entry-level wages are about uh, $10 an hour for about $20,000 a year. That's poverty wages, and so if we're going to move people out of poverty, we have to find them jobs that pay better than that. My life was uh, a life of addiction, um, criminal activity, and failure. I was a heroin addict, and uh, it came about as a young age. I was arrested for uh, possession and manufacturing of heroin. It destroyed uh, not only myself, but my family. I would say that was uh, just about the lowest point of my life. And I realized that uh, if I didn't change at that time, that uh, I was either going to, to the penitentiary for uh, a long time, or I would eventually die as an addict. And that's not what I wanted to do. My prayers were eventually answered when uh, a program called Jobs Partnership came into the jail during a recruiting tour. They all come out with no hope other than knowing that Jobs Partnership was there with them when they were in prison. So now that they're out of prison and taking us up on the promise that we made that we were going to be there to help them. With these green energy jobs, particularly solar jobs that we're helping people get, around 40,000 a year or better. So that's the goal. Move people up out of the bottom into the middle class, change the trajectory of their lives so they can buy houses, get cars, send their kids to college or trade school or whatever. But it changes their vision of what they can accomplish with their lives. The folks that typically get jobs in solar right now are cisgender, white male, you know, under 35 men who have been in construction since they were young adults. I work with a lot of black and brown folks in the community and our focus is on formerly incarcerated women specifically. A solar training hub is like a direct line for a participant that goes through it to be hired on with a company in the clean energy job. The skills that the solar hubs provide is everything from customer service skills all the way up to that hands-on training from what you'll be doing day to day at an actual job. This opens the door to actually finding employment and being hired. That last step, once you have all these skills, you're in an interview and they say, what are your skills? 
what do you do best? You'll use this chart and say, okay, out of all of these, these five are the ones that I feel I'm most good at and I use most frequently. The folks that I work with are definitely discriminated against because of their background. As soon as they start to do that background search or criminal history search, no matter how many diplomas you have or how much experience you have, you're immediately written off. My community is dark. We don't get a lot of information to success. No type of career is offered for people like me. When I first started with Jobs Partnership, I really had my doubts. I was like, I don't know if this is really going to work. I actually started at a third grade reading and math level, but I still put my all into it every single day, and it definitely paid off. When I finished, I had the highest grades out of the entire class. Installing solar makes me feel like a hero because I'm actually doing something that helps the environment. It doesn't even seem like a job. It, it feels like you put on your cape, you go out there, you save the world. These hubs should be everywhere because there are a lot of broken communities. There are a lot of black communities and people who need jobs. And this could help repair a lot of people's lives. The Future Energy Jobs Act, known as FEJA, was really the start of the process. It created a handful of job hubs, but all that money's run out. And so we need a, a new bill that's going to move us to a clean energy economy by 2030 and get us off fossil fuels, and that's called the Clean Energy Jobs Act, CJA. The fight to actually becoming a hub has been pretty rough. Just being completely honest, the biggest barrier that we've had is the fact that the Clean Energy Jobs Act focuses on black and brown communities. And there are folks that feel like that's not a priority. Adding that extra piece that provides jobs to minorities isn't something that people are interested in. We have a six, essentially a, probably a six week window to get the Clean Energy Jobs Act through the Illinois House. It's gonna come down to grassroots power, grassroots and faith power to engage those legislative decision makers. We're facing really a challenge by corporations that have more power than probably any single segment of society in the existence of humanity. The big utility corporations, they wanna control and own the power generation. And we're, we're saying that that's just not, not gonna happen. Meeting folks in Illinois People's Action sent me on a road of community organizing, volunteering, finding that value and love in doing something. I've done canvassing with local organizations, also met with Representative Dan Brady. So what we're asking you to do is not just to sign this new bill and agree with it, um, but we're actually asking if you can co-sponsor the Clean Energy Jobs Act. Senator Dan Brady, are you willing to co-sponsor the Clean Energy Jobs Act? This is 2021. We have to stand up. So whether you're a legislator or whether you're a community member, we have to be called to action because enough is enough. I wanna be able to say to people on the Southeast side that you can breathe the air, you can drink the water, and you can play in the park. Everyone deserves that, no matter where you live. CJA is a core part of redefining what it means to thrive in 21st century Illinois. My son now, he looks at me as being a, a real dad now, a, a responsible man, a respected man, and I'm also a grandfather. And they haven't seen any of the addiction. All they have seen is uh, Papa's going to meetings, Papa's going to work, and Papa's always in church. My kids are very proud of their father. 
if the Clean Energy Jobs Act bill passes, the it would be a very overwhelming moment <laughs> for me. I'm excited to get that started. Like I'm almost jumping out of my seat, I can't wait. If you told me five years ago that I'd be a solar installer, I'd probably laugh at you because I was scared of heights. <laughs> when I first got on the roof, I was nervous. The ladder was really my challenge because you have to swing your foot over the ladder to get down. So you have to hang off the edge of the roof for a, a tiny second and that was kind of scary. But when I stepped on the roof, that's when I knew that this is something I want to do for the rest of my life.